Hello, and we're back. Welcome back to Banner Badgers. Um, if you're still here with us, Twitch, thank you for staying. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you for watching us. Um, what we basically do is we do a series of our boxings, uh, and then we chop them up and we stick them on YouTube. But uh, if you're watching this on, on Twitch, thank you very much for hanging around. That, that's very nice of you, thank you. What we've got next is this. So this, uh, this turned up in the post today. This is the uh, Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. Um, it's uh, really, it, came, it was released in September. I think it was released in the UK last week, or general release, because uh, Target in the States had it like, two or three months before everyone else got it, officially. Um, so I've been waiting on this one. Thank you to uh, Ed from Ed's Gaming Emporium. If you, uh, if you want anything from Ed, he's a UK-based uh, e-commerce shop. Does all kinds of um, games, role-playing games, minis, dice, basically anything you want. Uh, Magic the Gathering, Pokemon cards, whatever you want. Get in touch with him. He's, he's more than happy to help. Um, and he also now posts internationally, so it's even better. Plus, if you go to his shop, use the voucher code word Band of Badgers, and you'll get a 10% discount. Plus, any pre-order, you'll get an automatic £5 off. So with a five pound off of any pre-order, plus your 10% discount, that's a really good deal. Um, and stay tuned, because sometimes we do giveaways. If you watch any of our adventures, quite often we'll do a 10 pound gift voucher for Ed's Gaming Emporium. And again, you get all of that stacked up. It's a really good saving, especially when you see something like this that comes out that you really, really want. So, if you don't know what Gloomhaven is, Gloomhaven is this massive box. It's really heavy. Filled to the brim, it costs, I don't know how much it costs, it costs off for over 100 quid. I got it about a year ago, um, and it was either the fifth printing, I think it was, but basically it was um, this guy called Isaac Childs, who uh, did a Kickstarter, raised a ton of money, and it's a fantastic board game. So this is a co-op adventure board game. So you've got all the pieces you need, but you don't need dice. So there's been a few other editions out. There's been like an expansion and there's been a, a, a new version. But this is Jaws of the Lion. The idea behind this is this is a smaller kind of intro box. A bit like a starter box, but it's big. It's, it's not as heavy as the main Gloomhaven, but it is big. It's so big, I don't know if you can see it on the, on the camera here. The lid doesn't fit on. There's so much content, it's pushing the <laughs> lid off. Um, this is shrink wrapped. I have not yet opened it because it arrived today. But I'll we'll <coughs> show you the back. So uh, you get four minis inside this one. In the big game, you get loads. I think there's more than 12 characters in, in the main game. A Some ton... of which you can't actually unlock until later on as well. Yeah, so the best thing about, about this game is story driven. There is a campaign, there's a story. Some of the stuff is locked. And it's like a computer game. If you imagine a computer game, and made it into a board game. All the kind of interactions and tiers and mechanics of that computer game is turned into a card game uh, or a board game. So that if you need to do things, there's no dice needed for this game, but if you need to do things, you just turn over a card and a card tells you what you need to do. It acts as its own kind of um, AI, if you like, of how that game is played. It's really, really well done. Really fought out. The guy is a freaking genius for actually doing this. He's raised millions on Kickstarter as well. And I heard all about the main, the original Gloomhaven, and I love board games, so I had to get it. And it is, it is huge. I've played with the game with Steve, the guy here, and it, it's brilliant. It was phenomenal. We took about an hour to kind of learn the system and then kind of replay it, so we knew what we were doing. This version is not exactly a travel pack, but you could use it as a travel pack. In the in the big game, you get board pieces and jigsaw pieces, and you put it all together. This one, they've done it a little bit differently. They've done it as part of the, the book set. So the maps you need are in the book. You then put the minis onto the book, and you have your battle map scenarios. So I'm basically going to stop rambling and rip this open, because I want to see what's inside. And I haven't seen many uh, reviews about this one um, it's tough plastic so are there any cheat codes to uh, unlock the characters early no but there is, there is the um, it's, it's really strange because you say that there are in Gloomhaven and I think they've done the same here as well we'll have a look 
you get like envelopes, cardboard envelopes. And they're about maybe two centimeters in width. And inside you get everything you need for that character. So you start off with, imagine playing Street Fighter. You have four main characters. And as you play that character, it unlocks other characters for you to play. This works exactly the same way. The other envelopes are sealed with stickers. So you have to play a certain amount of the story and it says, well, well done, your job is done. Now pick one of the other characters. And then you get to peel the sticker off and kind of crack the wax seal. It's a, it's a sticker, but it's a wax seal. And then you can unlock more things. And weirdly, all the stories I've heard from players about this game is that they've been able to kind of not spoil it for themselves. It's like having that bar of chocolate. You ever you ever seen those uh, things where they put the kids in front of the marshmallows and then the adults leave the room? It's like that for adults. You know, here's here's this game and you really want to play it, but you don't want to spoil it for yourself. I wasn't. Wow, blimey. Okay, yeah, that, that <laughs> the content really is pushing the lid off there. Um, there's a couple of books. Let's get rid of this. There is a couple of books in here. We've got Welcome to Gloomhaven. Stop. Read, read this before you do anything else. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> there are more components in this game than you may be used to, and it's important to make sure they are organised before you start to play the game. This is where we do an unboxing. I have to be very careful about where everything comes out of. This sheet will give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to easily organise your game box, good, and where to go from there so you can start playing as fast as possible. <coughs> So it gives you a list of everything that's in the box. You get a map, sticker sheets, glossary, su supplementary scenario book, main scenario book, and a learn how to play guide. Um, oh yeah, they give you zip bags this time so you can store things. Three unique monsters, initiative order tokens. Apparently they're gonna give you a plastic tray as well to, punch the, uh, to put things in. There's the envelopes I was talking about. So these are character envelopes. Uh, the monster stack envelopes. That's how you see uh, how how uh, powerful the monsters are. There's the mini boxes. Oh, it says, very important, do not open the small boxes with the ABCD markings. <gasps> They've already enticed me, so I need to, uh, to not open those. And there's a QR code um, about one of those things. So, draws the line, learn how to play guide. Uh, nicely printed, nicely presented, 31 pages. Uh, let's just have a quick flick through there. Um, well, that's quite nice. They're actually, you, you probably can't see it on the, on the camera, but some of the content is underlined with like a highlighter to make it stand out more. It, it's, it's easy to read, but you can't see it that well on the camera. Um, but really, You can really see nice it there stuff. actually on that, on that uh, crossbar there on the yeah. page. Yeah, so artwork there, that absolutely fantastic. Let's put that there. Character sheets are back. I did like those. Yeah, the character sheets the were movements. really good in Gleaming Haven. And if you're a computer gamer and you, you can't stand uh, board games because you think they're too slow, Gloomhaven is actually available on Steam as well. It's still, I think it's still beta, kind of. It's not fully, it's not a full game. But, um, oh, there you go, how to set up your table. So you've got your token tray next to it now. And your stickers. So in the main Gloomhaven, you had this map that you had to fold out as a cardboard map and a sheet of stickers. So as you went to each location and completed it, you would then put the sticker on top of the map. So the map would grow over time with all your, um, how you explored different areas. And I think that was really nice. On that that was, yeah, because when, so we, when we played it, we raided that dungeon, managed to unlock the chest before the end scenario kicked in. And yep. one of the items we pulled out of the chest was unlocking a new location, a new side quest. And yes. you do get a real sense of, oh, yeah, that's way cool um, when, when you do that. There's definitely a sense of achievement. I would like to see, um, you know, something you could put that in a frame. Um, like in Forbidden Lands... Uh, you get you have the same concept of using a map and it's kind of hexes and you put your stickers on however with forbidden lands what they did it's, it's not cardboard it's only paper but it's double-sided so you could have two separate games 
you don't have to kind of you know ruin it and then they've recently released um removable stickers so repeatable so you can you can do it again and play it however much you like so here we have the glossary oh there's a complete contents list there so you got all the minis all the pieces a ton of playing pieces this is not you know this is not monopoly you're not going to be playing this for an hour this is when you have a sunday afternoon spare and you've got some mates around um have a go if you're into uh, fantasy games role-playing games do check it out if you oh, oh we lost steve there if you have um what happened steve did you just place your pre-order for the playstation yeah, yeah I'll cr <laughs> crash the internet <laughs> Um, 50 of them coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought Sounds it was a good right. investment for Christmas. We can do a giveaway, Steve. Yeah, yeah, okay. chat. Who wants a PlayStation 5? <laughs> Roll it now. Um, oh, that reminds me of something from Rune Lords that's coming up in a future episode. That looks brilliant. Is it when uh, Harrison turns into a rat? It is. Ah. Is it there's an already around. It is now. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I didn't say that. That wasn't me that said that. I, uh, you know, Harrison likes to look at dirty pictures in, in books. So, you know, I can't stop him. <laughs> he does what he wants. Ooh. There you go. This is a supplementary scenario book. There's That's an, cool. Is that upside down? I'm not sure. I love the cover. Um, the cover's really nice, actually. Um, it's only a few pages in there, but it is. No, it's looking good. I'll just move that out of the way. Um, oh, there we go. So if, the, the map um, there, if the, the Steam game, scenario. if the Steam game is uh, multiplayer online, I would be well up for um, playing it. I'm not really up for board games, but if it if we can get the the, the Steam, Steam game version. isn't isn't the board game. The Steam game is a computer game version of it. Oh, oh yeah, Where... sorry. What I mean, yeah, by that is if if that is is somewhat in the same universe, I'll be up for playing that. So, yeah, it's it's basically uh, battle scenarios. So you get a little bit of story, and then it says, right, um, here's three rooms. You're going to start the front door, and you have to go into the thieves' den, uh, beat everyone up, beat up, you know, like the Red Hood and find the stolen treasure, take it back to the person who gives you the job and get paid. You know, it's those kind of things. So they're not massive maps. This isn't this isn't Dungeons and Dragons where you've it's got like a bunch of side quests basically. Explore. Yeah. I like the way Joe okay. just brings on his snake. Get him get in ready for Tomb of Annihilation though. <laughs> yeah. You're in the jungle, for... jungles of Cholt and the snake comes down. Joe's yeah. taking his snake out for a walk. That's it. Really detailed, actually. These are. I do miss the fact they're not cardboard jigsaw pieces, but I guess it means they can. You know, they have done a unique map for every encounter this way. Rather than having here's some wooden floors, here's some stone floors. You know, they've been able to to dress this up really, really well. Really, really nice. It's, it's difficult because if you look at any reviews on, on these things, um, you can never really do it justice. It, it's, it's beautiful done. Really, really well done. Um, I'm already kind of picking up on some of the writing as well. It's, it, it, looks, <laughs> it does look good. Is there any significance behind the different colored tiles? So you can see um, on the other one, there's like red and yellow. And there's greens in there as well. I think there, uh, there's it's a type of obstacle, so obstacle that can be removed or destroyed versus an, an immovable obstacle. Right. Yeah. Okay. But I'll read the rules properly and I'll let you know. <clears throat> uh, we probably well we won't be uh, filming Jaws of the Lion. Um, I'm not sure how. Actually, we could. I mean, we've got. Uh, yeah, top down camera. I've got a top-down camera, but I've also got a Vorpal board. It's, the Kickstarter is should be releasing in sometime September, October. And that means that I can actually scan in all these components. And we can play, if we had to, a board game uh, on Zoom or Teams or whatever, you know, Skype or whatever. 
it's a it, that's a nice system. So I don't know when I get my Vorpal board, I will find out. You get a stash of car, uh, cardboard tokens. They're double sided. Again, really nice. They're, uh, what I do like about them is what they've learned. I think is they've over printed. Mm-hmm. So you want you never get one that's too close to the edge, which I've seen so many times in other games. So they've really overprinted those. I do like that. That is nice. Got so got a, got a question from chat for you. Go ahead. Um, so Joy Division said that we've just bought the Gloomhaven game as part of the Frosthaven Kickstarter because that's the, the second edition he's on Kickstarter at the moment. Um, is Jaws of the Lion a separate game? Yes. So it is a separate game. Um, you are a bunch of mercenaries doing a separate quest. However, they have said all the stuff you see here can be, I don't know where I'm looking over there, I'm looking at the chat, but that's over there. Um, so all the stuff you see can be used in Gloomhaven and you can tie in as part of Gloomhaven as well. So uh, yeah, the Frost one was um, an expansion, if you like. This is more of a starter box set, a beginner box set, because I think the feedback was that Gloomhaven was was big. It takes a long time to learn all the, all the mechanics. This is a cut down version, a starter box. But I think if you if you if you play this and you like this, you will absolutely love Gloomhaven. It's well worth the investment. Gloomhaven, I adore. It is an amazing game. If you have a gaming table that you can leave it all set up on. Wormwood, um, then <laughs> it, you know it's 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 amazing. You, you'd want to have that. It's so big. It's not a game you want to put away. Um, I mean, if you've ever played Risk, completely through the night. Uh, I did that in, in student digs. We used to play Risk. Um, you know, come back at two a.m. from the nightclubs. We put we play Risk until we go to class the next day. You know, we would we would do that. Um, it's one of those games. I remember donkeys years ago, World of Warcraft had a board game and it was big. It was like Gloomhaven. It was a huge board game, over a hundred pounds to buy. And it was something you had to leave up. You couldn't pack it away because it was too much. It was too much to hold, but you know, everything, some of these bits are repeated. So you will have a version of this in the main Gloomhaven game. This is is a cut down version again, but you know, these are extra encounters, extra monsters if you need them. Very, very nice. So it just keeps coming. There's tons of stuff in here. Really nice. All very nice. Initiative counters as well this time. It actually says that's board six. And there's the there's the map. So as I said, much smaller. It's that's nice actually. That's nicely finished. And there is the town, the town, the city of Gloomhaven. So what you do with your stickers is when you've completed certain things, so you might find there's a Thieves Guild somewhere. So the sticker, you put the Thieves Guild on the map and then you might go back there again. So at least you don't have to look for it, it's on the map. But that, that is a um, solid card. That's thicker than the box it comes in. So that is really, really nice. But you can imagine that in it, like maybe on a picture frame or something. You can, you can stick it out. Yeah, it's good. Mm. That's that, that, really good. As a, as a, so, Steve, when we played Gloomhaven, remember, because the map was so big, weirdly, the map for Gloomhaven feels like it should be a board game. It's the board for a board game. It unfolds, it folds out. It was so big, you had to put it somewhere else. So if you've got another table or you just stick it on a sofa or something, you end up putting it there. This, you can at least pass this around it can fit on the table so pros and cons with, with everything i guess but that's nice very similar style as well i mean that's so. that's not much bigger than oh well, that's probably twice twice the character cards isn't it from gloomhaven the character cards are yeah um probably about a5 size and that looks a4 from here so you've got some more health health trackers um health and magic mana still very nice you've got four of those Nice size, feel good. Yeah, they, they were they were really good. They're... Yeah, some of these are nice and stiff, which I like. They're not rattly or anything. Those are very nice. And then we get into the box, look. So we have, there's the tray. 
So they provide you with a tray now to put everything in, which, which is quite nice. There's our minis. So you can see the difference. So here it is. Uh, there's an axe. Or a hatchet. Yeah, let's open those ones. Not. These ones, so th these ones we can open. These ones we okay. can't. Because they're, right. they're the sticker of the wax seal. Right. So, uh, yeah. again, you know, give me some marshmallows and then leave the room. Who knows what could happen? Who knows what happens when we turn the cameras off? Um, but let's have a look. So, it's it, it really exciting that we're going to play this. This, this, this um, was the ever exciting bit as well, weren't it? Was, you know, you're choosing your mini from the, the symbol that's on the box. You don't actually know what you're getting. Um, yeah. I have no idea what's inside that. No, no idea what race. I mean, you can kind of guess what the class might be. It's some kind of fighter, I'm assuming. But this is the mini. Um, if we can see that. Really nicely detailed. But it's not going to focus now. No, not going to focus. But he's got... He's carrying two hatchets. Or axes, hand axes. He's got a quiver on his back. He's got... He's got horns. <coughs> coming out of his hat. It's a really nice detail. He's got throwing axes on his leg, strapped to his leg. He's got, I think he's got two on each side. He's got a sword or a dagger. Um, and that's really nice, that's thick. That is really good quality mini. That's a thick print. That's not wobbly at all. That's really, really nice. Superb. Um, and then, so you got eight of those. Oh, I didn't notice that, look, the skinny ones. They're different sizes. So there's a normal box, but look at the size difference. So uh, another well, they... question from from chat is from Chav Hunter. Um, gee, uh, the, uh, the mini you may not know this, but I'll ask anyway. Um, are the miniatures twenty eight millimeters, or are they drawn their thirty two? So are they more are they D and D sized, or are they? More you can. I, I've I've seen people paint these up and put and play them as D and D. Um, let's find out. So there is. Uh, the one from uh, Joy's Lion, and here, just because it's kind of on topic, here is Grim from Beetle and Grim. So yeah, they are <coughs> pretty much spot on, the same. Yeah, cool. the bases are the same, even the same thickness. I would say the Gloomhaven is a stronger plastic than this one. Oh, we lost Steve again. I tell you, he's placing his pre-order for PlayStation. <laughs> he's, 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 he's gonna he's gonna buy it first, and then he'll uh, he'll tell us, "Oh yeah, they sold out now, but I got my pre-order in." Right, cheers, Steve. Um, right. So these are just some stands for your cutout tokens. You get a nice bag of those. The, the, there is a relevance to the yellow and the white, mainly because of the uh, bosses and stuff like that. Uh, a whole host of co cards, got a boss card, screaming shot. So these are the action cards for, for enemies to use, and you'll put these out. I wonder if these ones now stick in here. Is that gonna work? Maybe that way, not sure. So that's those. They give us some bags. Now we didn't get those in Gloomhaven. When you unwrapped everything, you just had a load of, uh, make sure you have Stuff some elastic bags. About. Yeah. Um, and there was no trays or, or put things in. So when you put them in there, they just fall all over the place. Um, but yeah, they've given us some bags this time. So thank you again. Again, they're always tweaking, always thinking, always improving. We've got, this is the uh, Monster Encounter cards. And what you do is you put it in an envelope. So this is the envelope. And depending on what the instructions tell you to do, you basically put it in, you slot it in, and then it tells you what the attack rate and what the health is of the of the bad guy, like how much damage they're gonna do, you just slot it in. And then when you need to, you take it out, you rotate it, put it in. So this is in counter level four, you put it in. Counter level five, you twit, turn it, put it in. Counter level six. So, you know, you can see the same creatures uh, re repeatedly, but they get harder. Just as like you will go up in levels as well, 
your your skills will increase. There's another way of doing it. We have two. Don't know why we have two, but there are two. I think you only got one in there. Gloomhaven. Oh, no, I've got four. Oh, so that will be interesting to use. Don't know what these are. Cure and bless. Monster attack modifiers. There we go. Available item. Oh, I know what these are. They're um, they're markers for your cards. So when we put them in, there you go. Monster attack modifiers. So when you put them in, you've got those there. That's a really nice touch. Again, they weren't in the uh, the previous box set. They might be in the winter expansions kit though. So uh, check those out. Let us know. Let us know how you get on. You both seem intent on a PlayStation 5 at the moment. And you got, just in case you didn't know, Joe, there's a snake on your shoulder. <gasps> <laughs> Not for, uh, yeah, it's my uh, familiar throat leech. <laughs> you got eye goggles. Uh, there's more. Uh, there's a magic items in there. What else we got? The yeah, acrobat is an additional cards. And there, <gasps> it just goes on. Oh, these are the fantastic bits. So these are extra uh, stories and and titles which influence the game itself. So those are already quite nice. And then you get the pack sets. Now this is basically like your character sheet. So this represents each of the minis in the box. So we already opened up the hatchet, the, the ax person. There are no stickers on, on these. So unlike the minis, they have no stickers. So inside you should have, here you go. You have everything you need for that character. And that, that you is get a lot solid. in the box, don't you? You get a ton. Oh, again, you know, the box was lifting off of this one. Yeah. Halt, do not open this pack until <laughs> this character reaches level five. Oh, okay. At the time, flip this card over and read the back for further instructions. Oh, it does say hatchet. Yeah. So that's the first time we've seen it actually say hatchet. And it says it there. So, okay, that's interesting. Halt, do not open this pack until you are directed to do so. So there's your, might, might be your power-ups and things to have. Then there's your action cards, specific to your character. Play reference cards, again, hatchet cards. So what to do, what actions you can take, how to do combat. Here is your character sheet. This is a smaller version than the one in Gloomhaven. And what you did, you put it on the table and then you, you place your cards where it says. So these are lost. These are active, these are discarded. So then you, you know you can kind of put them around your pack. And then when it tells you to, you can kind of uh, revive what's in the lost pile. Then it goes back into the active pile. So it uses a really nice game mechanic. It's double-sided. And then it has a bit of background story for your character. Now, I suppose it's up to you if you wanted to role play it, but you could. It's not gonna show up on the camera. It's too faded. That's gone. And then we've got more tokens there. These are tracker tokens. So you can put them on bits and pieces. There is your character sheet. So you can keep notes, how much XP you've got, how much gold, your items. You always get a handful. But if you've got five, six sheets in there for that one character, it doesn't seem like enough. Like you, you know, you're gonna want a hundred, but Gloomhaven is a big game. I know this game is not is not as big as Gloomhaven, but uh, that is probably going to be more than enough. Plus, if you go to the website, you can download more. There we go. That's it, guys. Any last questions before we wrap this up? Is PlayStation 5 launched yet and available for pre-order? No, tomorrow morning, uh, I think. Yeah, that's it. So it's all now tomorrow morning. The snake is now coming yeah, over your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is it gonna? Is it just searching around, or does it like wrap around your throat now? Yeah, sometimes, but it doesn't really squeeze that hard. 
Is, is that has a it ever... snake? Yeah, yeah. Has it ever bitten you? No. Does it, does it go for a nibble? No. no. Just try. Uh, like the most chilled ones out of all of them. He is a bit of an idiot. He'll like climb in places that he gets stuck in and stuff. Like my ear. <laughs> is he going for your ear? <laughs> right. Sure. Any last questions, guys? No. As you've not paid attention no. at all, because <laughs> you're looking for PlayStation prices. So, how do you know when you. Uh, 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 no. <laughs> so, obviously, you can only open the cards at certain points. Is that like once you've completed the game once and then you have to run through it again? Or, like, did you play no, the when... first one? Yeah, so we haven't, we haven't finished the first one. The, 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 the first Gloomhaven is so big, um, but it's, it's really enjoyable. But it is something where you probably, um, you, I don't know, can you have like two games, you could probably have two games on the go with different sets of people, uh -huh. but I think it's kind of one epic playthrough. You need the same yeah. friends. Again, it's not like a board game where you know, you come home and then you start playing. You want the same people yeah. to all be there at the same time so you can play this. If you have a regular D&D group and you want to try something new, play this. So if you have those people available, do it. Go for it. So but, it's kind of yeah. like a campaign almost. But... Yep. Yeah. And that's what it is. You're telling a, you're telling a shared story. So um, I wholly suggest giving it, giving it a go because it is lovely. So they have put some bits in the box lot. There is the plastic in here is kind of shaped, but yeah, I don't think there's anywhere for that one to go. So that one might just have to float around. But I've got my bags, and I've got my bits and pieces. But it can all all go in there um, somehow, some ways. So we keep those in. But oh, Steve's back now. So he's bought his PlayStation. Yeah, he's bought fifty more. <laughs> <laughs> He's been on the phone to the bank. I didn't mean to order 50. <laughs> right. Yeah. But yeah, it's a, that is a lovely game. Lovely box. That's really nice. The side of the box, I just noticed, has the uh, the character etchings on as well. Kind of burned into the wood. Hmm. Which is a, another nice touch. So that's pretty cool. We were just saying you managed to get another 50 uh, PlayStation, Steve. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So I sort of pre ordered away feverishly. <laughs> you you jest, Joe. You jest, you laugh, but I bet he was. <laughs> I bought one off you for three fifty. You know I mean one previous owner and all that. <laughs> <laughs> if you're doing those deals, I'll do it. Any last questions, <laughs> you, you missed you missed the end. But you can watch it again on YouTube. Um, we we or, opened or up Twitch. this uh, uh, on Twitch for, for the next 14 days. Um, yeah, which has opened up the character sheet packs. Uh, and again, really, they're heavy. That's got some weight in it. So, uh, yeah, all I'm really impressed. I'm really looking forward to start playing this. Um, I've uh, roped in a few people to give it a go. So, really, really looking forward to it. Who's namely uh, my wife and my little boy? I was about to say, what's the diff <laughs> what's the sort of difficulty stuff. level on playing playing that? Is it something that you could play with like younger people? Or? Um, yes, you can actually. The um, because it's it and it helps with their numbers. So I've got the uh, Mad Mage board game, which you can kind of see in the background there, and that says for ages twelve and up, fourteen and up. Okay. Uh, my boy is nearly six, and we love playing that. And it's just because he can roll numbers. It's only a D20 you need, and you're mm -hmm. adding small numbers up. So he loves playing it. He loves beating the bad guys and, and exploring, so you get to explore the different dungeons and things, and he, he absolutely loves it. This is obviously a bit more in-depth. Um, yep. But really, you know, if if it gauges their intention and it gets them off the computer, otherwise you just end up like Josh there. He's just staring. <laughs> the weird thing with so Josh is Josh works with computers and basically gets out of bed and works <laughs> with computers all day long and then stay it's nearly eleven PM now 
here in the UK as we're filming this, and now he's I'm still looking... in front of his computer. I'm just reading up on corn snakes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so now, now you see that kind of greyish, shiny complexion. That's not reflection off the monitor. That is the colour of his skin now. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah, I'm he's just like a model. I'm, slow, I'm slowly turning into a laptop. In the morning, that was probably the wrong thing to do in the morning, really. But there, there you go. So, lots of things. Lots of things for Josh to do in the morning. Are there any, um, aside from unlocking things naturally through the game, are there any secrets that that you made? Uh, Okay. So I don't know about this game because obviously I've just unwrapped it. But in Gloomhaven, you had like a little booklet, and that also had a sticker on it. And it said that if you um, don't open it too early, because there's going to be spoilers inside. And, and again, that's the marshmallows. The idea of having these things, and you know it will expand the game, but you don't want to spoil it for yourself. Mm. Um, yes, I'm a big kid and I love games, but yeah, I, I still want to like. Wow! Open it at the right time, and go. Wow! Yeah, that I'm... the 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 idea that uh, you know Isaac Charles, who came up with this game, the concept, he put enough thought in there that he knew that you would be excited to open those up at a later stage to keep the game interesting, to keep you coming back for more. I think is superb, it's, and for a board game as well, it's brilliant. And this content um, does not go back in the box. <laughs> got a question from Chav Hunter. How much is the expansion? Which expansion? Um, that, that, that's a good question. Um, if you go to Kickstarter and do a search for Gloomhaven, or uh, they're called Cephalog Games. Right, you probably won't be able to read that. Um, Cephalog Games. That's too much reflection. No. Um, check that out, and then you can. You might still be able to do a. Uh, what's the late late Kickstarter's called, Steve? Uh, late backers. Yeah, uh, the late, late pledge. Late pledges. Um, you still might be able to do that, but yes, if you order, it, it's it's fantastic. I mean, the, the Gloomhaven so box much, is three times that? bigger than this. How much yes, was I don't that know. From this was, Ned. Uh, from Ed's. I think between 40 and 50 pounds for this. This is fantastic value. Yeah. Um, Gloomhaven. Uh, Gloomhaven, you can probably pick up on Amazon now. So, you know, I'll, I'll it's, go and it's, that. it's big and it's heavy, Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven is about four or five kilos. It is heavy, but it is well worth worth the uh, the cost. It's over 100 quid. I don't think it's I don't think it's 190, but I think you might be looking at 120 uh, for main Gloomhaven. But cool. How long, how long did it take you to play through that? Gloomhaven. We haven't finished. Okay. We are literally a few. I mean, we were a, maybe five or six scenarios in, and there's well over there's 20 scenarios in here. I think it said, and there are. Um, it says 25 scenarios in here. Wow. So, there are, I think there are about 30, 40, 50 scenarios in Gloomhaven. And they, you know, they get bigger and harder. Just like any computer game does. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that was, that was a good mechanic of it. it. It was really, really nice. Chaff Hunter says the Horizon Zero board game, which I think um, Ed may or may not be stocking at the moment, um, is 15 kilograms in, in weight. Oh, wow. Wow. And and sorry, because because I'm um I like to know the meanings of words, and and intriguing words intrigue me. Funnily enough, um that that's not stuff. It's careful of air, careful oh. meaning head. So it's head of air games. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Sounds like syphilis games when you said it. But... Yeah, careful of air. I can see that's it a now. Different you type said of it. Game to play. <laughs> yeah, syphilis games. <laughs> That's a different type of game. Oh yeah, because it's a headless horseman. Game you, when you go out partying in the yeah. Southampton. Yeah, that's that's the that's the story <laughs> behind it. So I've interest yeah. in um, 
why why he named it that. But yeah, that's how it fits together. Head of air and then headless horseman uh, symbology. I like as well the the map on the the adventurer's table is is Gloomhaven. It's the same map you get inside the box. That's, that's um nice. interesting looking device with the um the green in the middle on the table. Yes. Looks like a um a VGA cable. That uh, with, the, with the twisty things. <laughs> Do you spend too much time in front of the machine? <laughs> well, see, that one looks like uh, the Apple of Eden from Assassin's Creed. Yep, that's true. Um, you've got various coins as well. All, the coins are inside. That uh, they're inside here as well. They're inside Gloomhaven. Yeah. Um, you can actually buy the proper coins as well if you want to. There's some more artwork down the side. Again, yeah, because like, of reflection, it's very shiny. This box, the the sizes of stuff looks a bit interesting. That you've got some things looking bigger than the other. That in, whether it's just depth perception, but yeah, it's just the objects look. Some look bigger than standard, or whether they're you know, just intentional that way. But I don't know. Sapper there. Okay, I remember that, Steve. Thank you. Right, we're going to leave it there because we've waffled on long enough. Um, I need to go and pre-order a PlayStation. There's none left. He's not just Steve Portman now. Steve Cobble. Yeah, Steve Portman. Yeah, Three million. They're, yeah. all, they're all arriving with Steve. <laughs> He's, if we dish him out of the boot of his car. <laughs> roll up, roll up. Well, governor. Yeah. yeah, so, um, if you're watching this on Twitch, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, do you want to give out a code, Steve? Uh, yeah, uh, I, 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 I'd started earlier and then obviously died and Nightbot night gets in with me. So um, let's leave it to tomorrow. Okay, next time, yeah? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do it tomorrow. What are we doing tomorrow? Oh, yeah, bloody hell, it's Rise of the Rebels. <laughs> <laughs> it's Thursday. We'll be, we'll be back tomorrow. Oh, my God, I'll do this again. <laughs> So, to, um, so if you're watching this on Twitch, thank you very much. Um, join us tomorrow for our, our next episode of Rise of the Rune Lords. We have not one, but two guest star players. So it's going to be really interesting. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be manic. I mean, this is going to be fantastic. Um, so please do join us for that. If you watch us on YouTube, check out our other stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell button. Um, if you're watching this on Twitch and you haven't backed us yet on YouTube, please do, because every like and subscribe really actually does help uh, it goes a long way into supporting us into what we do we're in lockdown um which is all we want to do is play some games so uh, help us do that and come and join us come and play some games with us join us in chat ask questions win stuff we've got uh beetle and grim t-shirts to give away we've got dungeon fog premium accounts to give away uh 30 day trials to give away <laughs> Uh, and other stuff as well. So uh, we'll have some competitions from our new guest star player who joins us tomorrow, who will be Theo from the Gallant Goblin. Uh, do check him out on YouTube, Gallant Goblin on YouTube. So uh, yeah, he, uh, all kinds of, of goodies coming this way soon. And <sighs> Beetle and Grimm have announced their Kickstarter is now the 27th of October. Check them out, um, get onto their sign up list for the latest Pathfinder stuff. Um, it's some really, really good, 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 cool stuff coming. But anyway, enough waffle, time to go. Do I need to sign off, Steve, or can you do it? See you later. See you it didn't work, Steve. Yeah. Bye. Bye. I, was, I, was, I was watching something. <laughs> he's, watching, he's still watching PlayStation. <laughs> is, is, has Game got it? Has Amazon got it? That's what we need to know. Who's going to get it first? Is. And where are we going to order from? Because Game, sometimes send them out early, but you might take the day off work and it doesn't turn up until like 5 p.m., which is no good because we've got kids. Yeah. So we have to wait for the kids to go to bed before you can get, so that's no good. What we need is someone who's going to turn up early in the morning, like an Amazon delivery around here, where, where I am. They normally turn up before midday. So if I'm going to normally work, do that thing where you can pick them up like in the middle of the night. Oh, they, midnight. Um, they, might, they might do for this, yeah. They might do, but we're still kind of in lockdown. You'd have to wear a mask and queue up two metres apart. Yep. That could be an option, I suppose. After the pub. <laughs> Joe's like, yeah, I'm still reading. What, what day is it released? 
no uh, idea. No, no, November the 19th. Is it a Tuesday or Monday or Friday? That's a, that's a Thursday, so it'll be right after your Pathfinder game. You can just go straight out and pick it up. Apparently, game in Hedrow <laughs> in Leeds are saying that you go there at 8 o'clock, pay a £10 deposit, and you dust off your games and trade them in. I don't know. It's just a picture I saw on Twitter. Oh, dear. Right, so we might have to do that. Anyway, we're waffling on about PlayStation, and PlayStation aren't sponsoring us. <laughs> yeah. See what? Sony, PlayStation, if you, if you happen to see this <laughs> before PlayStation 5 comes out, look, there are four of us here. <laughs> Just send us five PlayStation 5s. And we'll do an unboxing. We'll we'll do an unboxing. We'll play your games. We'll even do a giveaway. We could do a PlayStation 5 giveaway. I would happily give one away if I got one for free. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, if you got two for free. Yeah, I'll keep him one. (laughs) Yeah, that's a random two need two, wouldn't you? Well, maybe I I have one downstairs and I put one up in here. So, you know, in between, I I can just play games. Um, anyway, thank you very much for joining us, Twitch. Thank you. Um, it's much appreciated. Show some love if we've got any uh, thingies going on. I don't know. Uh, what are they call gift subscriptions. Uh, see you later. Right. Anyway. Cheers, all. We'll see you next Take time. Care. See you. Later.